and welcome back to Tech Tuesday. All right, I know, I know. I promised we'd be cleaning airbrushes, but I've been extremely neglectful with that. I promise I will get to that video. Um, but I got a great suggestion from Carl Becker, and the question was about specifically about dealing with um, one of the aspects of the way that I clear or varnish these paintings. Uh, so I thought I'd kind of touch on that. I thought I'd expand on that a little bit and give you kind of a rundown on the really the three ways that, that I have finished these paintings, varnished them. Um, so first off, uh, I'm kind of stuck between the custom automotive world and the fine art world as far as what I paint with and how I paint and what I paint on. For example, the, the painting of Nubble Lighthouse here. Uh, this is a very common surface for me to paint on. This is powder coated aluminum and uh, it's, it's just basically a piece of 063 aluminum nice thick piece of aluminum and it's powder coated on both sides. It's just a great surface for me to work on. It's totally archival because the painting is done on a piece of metal that will never oxidize or change. Uh, it's obviously very stable. It's never going to warp uh, and it's just it's just a really really great surface. S similar to that I've done a lot of work on titanium. This is on a really really nice piece of titanium. Huge thick piece of titanium and has very similar qualities to aluminum as as its you know resistance to oxidation which makes it very archival um, and then finally aqua um, uh, ampersand sorry that makes a clay board this is a prepared mdf type board uh, hardboard that's again very stable acid free on the painting surface uh, and just really really a nice kind of kind of surface to paint on so that being said, it kind of opens up a, a few different ways that I can deal with these as far as the varnish or clear. Now the reason why you'd want to varnish or clear your painting in the first place is for protection. It does two things really. When you varnish a painting, generally it will, it will deepen and enrich in the colors and give the painting more depth. But what it's really there for is to protect your painting, to make sure that it stays looking like it should for a really long time. Um, and that's usually the, you know, it's, it's the case with an automotive clear. It's designed to protect the paint. Uh, and for, again, for paintings, it, it really does the same thing. So there are a, a few different ways that I kind of deal with it. And it's individual. It's not that one is better than another. It just depends on the type of look that I'm, I'm shooting for or the ultimate archival-ness, I guess. But even that's questionable. And I'll explain that in a minute. So on the Corvette painting here, this has, I'll, I'll go through each one of the three. This has Createx 4050 Gloss Clear as a, as a final varnish. Now why I like using the 4050, oops, sorry about that. So one of the reasons I like using the 4050 from Createx, this is meant as a semi, well, it's not semi-gloss, you can see. It's got gloss to it, but it's not, you know. It's not glass-like, but it's still very glossy, very clear, just a really nice kind of finish. But why I, I really like using it is this is in all the paint that I use. I mix this in with the paint to make the paint stronger and adhere better. So having this final coat of, of, of the gloss clear is a similar product to what I'm using in the paint. So it becomes one, really one indestructible kind of kind of surface on that. Uh, so I really like using this a lot. Plus, you know, the, the finish on it is great. It's not super high build, so you can still see the paint strokes in the work, but this will really hold up well. If you put enough of this on uh, over time, if this does get, you know, dust and dirt in it, it's very easy to clean off, which is really nice. And that's, again, the point of having a varnish on there or a clear so that you can maintain its brand new look over the over the life of the painting. So if you put enough of this on, you can even sand off the very outer layer and then and then reapply another coat and it'll look it'll look brand new. So I really like this stuff. Plus, another nice thing, especially on the uh, ampersand board, this, this clear is flexible. So while this is a very stable material to paint on, it's wood. It's, it's particle board. So this will move over time. Not a lot, but it will, it will flex and it'll, it'll expand and contract very slightly. But, so by having a, a flexible clear on top of that, this will always look like this. There won't ever be any hairline cracks or, or fogging or anything like that. So I really like using the gloss clear on 
the UVLS on on the aqua board. I keep saying aqua board. There is an aqua board. This is not aqua board, which is their watercolor board. Uh, this is clay board. So, okay. This one here has a little bit different. You can see it has a different sheen to it. It's a little bit more matte finish. On this panel, um, I've, I've used uh, a clear from Golden, and this is really a two-part clear, uh, and and it's it's a little bit more traditionally um, archival than the Createx. So the idea behind this is there are two layers on on this painting. The first painting, the first layer. As soon as I'm done with it, when I paint, when I put on this first layer, it's called an isolation coat. And basically, it's it's a lot. It's similar to to you know the type of just water based clear that's that you know I use on a lot of these paintings. It goes over the whole thing. You let it cure. It's a complete film. It's all you know. It's completely over the whole thing. And then after that, then I use their gloss clear that they offer, and that's also water based, which is nice. So I can spray that here at the at the studio. So the idea behind that is there are two separate clears, two chemically separate clears. So the first one goes on there and locks in the painting and keeps the painting the way it was when I finished it. The second coat is actually removable. So what happens is over time, if this were to get damaged with smoke or dust or contaminants or whatever, a conservator can actually remove that outer gloss coat and go back down to the, the isolation coat. So when they remove that gloss coat, you're back to the original painting, and then they can reapply the gloss coat and it's brand new. So this will this painting will essentially look like this indefinitely, and, and that's it's a great way to go. Um, it's a little bit more labor intensive because you're dealing with two different clears and two different, you know, type of, not really two different types of applications, um, but, you know, it's a little bit, it's a little bit more involved. So golden is the color that makes it, uh, color co company that makes it. It is not the color of it. <laughs> so this is the isolation coat. It's a very thin, thin material. Um, if you're doing um, any kind of acrylic or, or anything, this this can be applied with a brush or sprayed on, which is what I do. And then this is the polymer varnish that goes on top of that. So those are the two parts. So that is golden. And I'll have all the links for all these products in the description as well. Okay, finally, is the Automotive Clear. So this is, again, on a piece of titanium. And obviously titanium, any metal, is very, very stable, very sturdy. So I don't have to worry about flexing with this at all. So this one got Automotive Clear on it. So it's essentially the, um, the same as a car. A little bit different than a car in that the clear that's used on this is a much nicer clear than you have on your car. And it's... Uh, there's a lot more of it and it's treated a little bit differently which goes into what Carl was asking originally uh, so I'll get into that but this is the finish you get with this and it's the most it's the deepest shiniest glass like finish of the three it has it has just a just a mirror like finish on it which is really really nice so you can apply you can apply this this is difficult because this is a solvent based clear so I'll show you what it, well, I got to put the can here. So this is House of Color UCS01, and it's a, it's a urethane two-part clear. So it has, an, it has a uh, catalyst that goes with it, and, uh, and you add it to the catalyst and mix it up, and then you have a window to actually apply this before it becomes hard as a rock. And that's the advantage of it. Once it's on there and cured, it's, it's on there. Obviously, it's not removable like this guy. You can't take this off without ruining the painting. But the advantage to this one is because it's a high-quality clear, that UCS-01 is a show clear. It's very, very, um, it's very clear. It, it, there's no yellowing. There's no inclusions in it. It's, it's super, super glass-like. Uh, so the nice thing about this one is if anything happens to this over time, there's so much of that clear on here. I can literally sand this and then rebuff it and it'll look just like this again. So there's a lot of clear on it. You can get down quite far before you actually get to the painting. Uh, so that's that's just a really good thing as far as our arch archival type situation goes. Um, the d downside of this one is the, the automotive clear you can't spray in your house. You need special equipment to do it. It's, it's, uh, the catalyst in it is cancer causing. Uh, it's why you always see the auto body guys with full suits on and spray booths. Um, so this is something that you really can't do in your house. Um, you'll end up 
doing a lot of damage to yourself and everyone around you. Uh, plus, the conditions need to be just right. A dust-free condition will give you, you know, the best finish, which is why I use a spray booth. Now, the upside is usually you can find someone, if you're not into automotive, usually you can find someone um, close to you that will do this for you. Uh, the trick is, is to find someone who really knows what they're doing. You know, you don't want to go to the, you know, the the $29 paint job place to get your, your artwork that you spend 80 hours on cleared. You want to find someone that does some custom painting because they'll have the right clear. Again, this is a different clear than what's on your car. It's a much nicer clear. So that's that's how that works. Now to answer Carl's question, Carl was asking because Carl is an auto body guy and an airbrush artist. Uh, the question was, is do you treat this the same way as, as a show car, essentially the clear? And the answer is yes. So there is the clears are put on it, it's sanded between, it's re-cleared, it's sanded, and then cut and buffed and polished. So it's it's all the way, you know, as if you were doing a show car for, you know, um, one of the big shows. Uh, and that's what gives it that that look. So, and there's also, you know, the wax put on, on it. So it really is just like a car. Uh, the finish is nice. So those are the three finishes I use. Um, if you do oil painting or, you know, watercolor or pastel, there are different ways to seal those. Um, I am not as versed on those. So um, I just kind of wanted to show you the way that I deal with it. Uh, but definitely, you know, look that up and um, get your information there. The varnish that golden sells the one i sh this one here um is it may be also used for oil I, I don't know i don't know so so double check that if you use something other than a water-based paint all right so that is your tech tuesday if you have any questions on the varnishes or the clears please let me know in the comments below if i missed something or if you have another question and just like carl if you have a an idea for a tech tuesday uh, please let me know because the more i can put off cleaning my airbrushes the better <laughs> So that's what we got. So as always, I so much appreciate you guys coming by, liking and sharing. And uh, and please hit that uh, subscribe button and click the bell icon so you can get all the videos as they come out. All right. So for Steve Leahy, this is Tech Tuesday, and I will catch you guys next week.